All right, everybody, you're welcome back to the Teju Babyface show or the Teju Babyface quarantine show. I must remember to always say that. Okay, it's time for Conversations with Kings. And my guest today is a Hollywood superstar and actor par excellence who's been in quite a few seminal works. And you can currently catch him on the hit TV series Dynasty. Um, awesome, awesome guy doing awesome, awesome things. And he plays uh, the character Jeff Kobe on Dynasty or in Dynasty. What's up, Sam? Chilling, man. Chilling. Just, just taking one day at a time. How you doing? Awesome. You're, you're a very difficult man to pin down. I mean, I was, I was looking for you, and apparently, you, you took a bike tour. You went on a bike ride or something, a motorcycle ride. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of my sanity. I try and get out every day and just just go for a cruise, you know. Really? Because uh, I used to I used to have a motorcycle. In fact, I had a couple. Uh, I started with a with a Kawasaki Ninja two fifty. Yes. I I went off to I went up to a, a, a Suzuki Jigsaw seven fifty, uh -huh. and I had a Honda Blade uh, one thousand. Wow! I, I got married and I got scared and I chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, maybe I may have to do that when I get married one day, but for now, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it, you know. Oh, so what do you ride? Uh, right now, I, I got a, uh, it's a BMW GS 1250. It's a, it's like a big touring bike. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's 1250 cc's. That's a lot of, that's a lot of grunt. It's a big boy bike. My, my friend, you know, I never thought I would get one. One of my friends has one. And, um, you know, I, like you, I rode sport bikes, you know, or like cafe bikes, like rat it out. And, uh. He's like, oh, you have to get this bike. And I was like, you know, that's a bike for like 60 year old white guys. That's, that's not. <laughs> See, like grandpa on, you know, and I rode it. I was like, oh my God, this bike is, it's, it's so comfortable. It's got all the bells and whistles. And what I like about it is it's got the bags on the side. Yeah, so you can carry stuff. Exactly. We're planning a trip. Uh, we're going to ride from Atlanta to LA. Uh, we're going to camp out. We're going to cook. Take like ten days, you know, and just, yeah. just but but the thing is, are, are you able to do that? Because you're, I mean, you're Sam Adego, okay, you're Jeff Kobe of, I mean, you're of not not of a series that that was cancelled or that died or that ran a few years ago. You're Jeff Kobe of a of a, of a series that is currently running on TV, very popular. How are you going to do all that camping around? Are you I'm, hoping the helmet is going to save you? Shooting right now. We, uh, you know, obviously we've been impacted like everyone else by uh, by COVID, so we shut down production. March 9th. Um, so we, we unfortunately had to end the season two episodes early. We usually wrap around this time anyways. We shoot from July to about April. Okay. Uh, so we shut down just for safety measures. So it's still airing right now. The episodes we've been shooting are still airing. In fact, the finale is this Friday. Um, yeah. But it'll leave some stories unconcluded because yeah. you know, and we missed it by two episodes. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm free. So, yeah, but um, but I'm asking from the fan point of view. How are you able to camp out without uh, thinking that the fans are going to mob you? Or I mean, how are you able to go out just like a normal person? I'm I'm, I'm mostly a, a relatively a private man. You know, I'm not going to be posting my location so people can. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> go like yeah, yeah it's like just to, just to get out and see some nature. You know, uh, which I'm I'm very grateful and fortunate that I can because I know that you know there's a lot of people who are experiencing this thing in a in a really extreme way you know i'm keeping tabs on what's going on with nigeria and it's it's heartbreaking so i'm i'm, I'm just very grateful you know all right uh, cool now speaking about nigeria i'm glad that you brought that up i i asked uh raza Doti this question i asked uh sami roti be this question yeah. i'm gonna ask you i think that i'm simply gonna ask everybody who is of african descent or nigerian descent who identifies with being african um it's one thing to say that you're proudly nigerian i mean that's one thing anybody can say that sounds like a platitude that anybody would say, you know. Uh, but it's another thing to proactively actually identify as Nigerian because I visited your Instagram page and, and there you are with a Nigerian flag saying proudly Nigerian and all that. I mean, what is it about being Nigerian or being from Nigerian that makes you want to still be Nigerian even though you're this uh, global phenomenon all of a sudden? I mean, that's that's what shaped me, you know, that's, that's, you know, even though I was a baby, I was born there, but I was a baby when we came, you know, my parents were just very, very, very unapologetically proud Nigerians, you know, um, I remember I'd be in middle school, you back then, you know, you're, you're a young guy, you're, you're embarrassed when your mom walks through with the, absolutely, I'm behave, you know, and I'm just like, oh my God, but you know, my, my parents growing up, they, they refused to speak English, 
to us. You know, they made sure that we knew the language. You know, they would make sure that we kept tabs on what was going on in the country. We would visit in December, and um, you know, my mom always told me that I seemed to, even out of all my siblings, that I just I wanted to learn. You know, I'd ask her what what different words meant, and 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 whenever we talk right now, she um, she only speaks to me in Yoruba, just because I, I you know I, I feel like. Um, you know, part of the platform that I have or the opportunity that I have as, as a storyteller is to change the narrative, you know, and, and you and I both know that the narrative of Nigeria is is one of poverty and corruption and 419 and, and listen, every country has its faults, but we're also brilliant, gregarious, you know, uh, intelligent people who are, are making strides in the arts and, and finance. Absolutely, absolutely. Music, we're, we're saturating every, every portion of the globe, so... You know, I feel like those of us who have an opportunity to try and, um, you know, uh, tell a different story, uh, we absolutely should because it only opens up more opportunities. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's it's like a responsibility that you have. Okay, so that that now you've uh, you've given rise to another question out of me because uh, we have twins. Uh, we're blessed with a boy and a girl. Right. And so uh, we're, we're staying in the United States for quite a bit now, and I'm, I'm trying to get them to actually understand uh, the Yoruba language. And, and I think if I speak it to them, uh, they're going to understand. Uh, now, this is what I want. I see quite a few guys who are in the States. In fact, even back in Nigeria, uh, the children now understand, but they cannot speak. So do you speak or do you just understand? I speak. Uh, it's a lie. You don't, Sam says, yeah, you don't speak. I'm uh -uh. Yoruba now. You know, um, listen, I, I don't want to lie, you know, because people put you to the test. I would say I'm like a good 90% fluent. There's still things I have to ask my parents, you know, about what does this mean or, you know, tonalities. But you just got to you got to keep practicing. You know what I mean? It's something that I, I want my children to learn. You know, I want my children to, you know, have that experience. You know, I think it's just um, I just think it's important because. You know, I believe as the world is blending and cultures are merging, you know, um, that's a beautiful thing. But we also don't want to, you know, lose, you know, what makes. You know what? My, my wife has to absolutely. You know what I'll do? I'll just, I'll just take this part out. Uh, I'll just edit it and I'll put it on a loop and just put it and play it on the television all the time because my wife doesn't just understand what I'm saying. So, babe, this is a guy who grew up in America <laughs> who speaks American but still speaks Yoruba. You, you need to understand. You don't understand what this moment means to me. You she actually don't, speak she it. Don't want your children to learn Yoruba or? No, no, she, she wants them to learn it, but she thinks that uh, if we don't speak English to them as well, that they will not learn Yoruba. And I tell her that, no, they're going to pick it up. They're in America. They're in America. They'll learn all the English they need to learn in school. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Look, if I, if, I, if, I, if I didn't like you very well before, <laughs> if I just sort of liked you as a fan now, I really, really like you. All right, now, so uh, speaking of your parents, uh, and now let me get if the story is correct. Uh, you came to Nigeria, I mean, to the United States from Nigeria as a, as a child, uh, born to Christian missionaries. Your parents were actually in the Christian church and they did Christian work. Is that correct? Yes. Deeper life. Very deep. <laughs> deep. Deep. Yeah. It's good that you have confirmed that. What I want to know is how you were able to convince deeper life Nigerian parents who are proudly Nigerian, proudly mm. Christian, proudly deeper life, that you wanted to go into the arts, into Hollywood of all places, Sodom <laughs> and Gomorrah, the man of speaking, and they allowed. How were you able to do that? You know, it's funny. That's exactly how my parents see L.A. is, is Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, <laughs> you know, I still don't know if my parents know what the hell I do. You know, I, I, I have, um, I've, I've, it's that whole kind of migrant African story. You know, we came to the States. I'm the youngest of seven. You know, half of my siblings are doctors, you know, very academic family. My mom was, you know, a teacher in Nigeria. My dad worked for the embassy and my father actually didn't want to come to the States. He was completely fine, you know, but my mom kind of convinced him when she got involved with the church. And um, I, I can't say it definitely hasn't been challenging. You know, I, I got my start, some would say, later in acting for that very reason. You know, I was enrolled in an arts program in college and, you know, six boys you know uh, i'm the youngest of them you know my, my my brothers were like my idols you know i looked up to them and you know i was in the arts program and i always had good grades and like no 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 you know there's no room for this you know you know uh, someone once said that as as a son of african parents you, you have four choices you can be a doctor a lawyer an engineer or a disappointment <laughs> 
so that literally was you know kind of the mindset and um so i i transferred into the business program and i went and did business and marketing and i got a great job out of college i was working with general mills before that target doing marketing consumer insights and i was just miserable you know and and um i, I actually uh i just decided you know why not um so i i cashed out my 401k and I went to art school in San Francisco and, uh, you know, they literally almost crucified me. To this day, my mom still says, you know, you should go back and get degrees. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I can encourage more parents um, just to be more open minded that you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's good to make money and have, you know, the house and, you know, support your family. But, you know, your happiness is, is the most. Yeah, it's, it's, it's paramount because I, I'll tell you exactly what my father said to me in the words that my father said when uh, he discovered that I was going to be uh, an actor, first of all, and then a comedian. My father said to me, he said, I did not send you, and so let me just put the Nigerian thing. Mm -hmm. I did not send you to the best schools mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. so that you can go and become an actor, mm -hmm. so that you can become Babasala. Mm -hmm. That's just, what nonsense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. literally what my father said to me. It's even worse now, you know, because dynasty is dynasty. So... You know, I, for the longest, I did not want, I didn't want my mom to watch the show, you know, uh, but she's, she's clever. She found it. You know? <laughs> she called me one day. She said, you see my son on TV with, with his chest just bare. You see yourself kissing his white woman, my son, who I raised in the church. It was like a 30 minute conversation. She kept going on and on and on and on and on. And then after the conversation was over, she's like, okay, so when is the next episode? And I was like, so I have a fan. I have a fan in you, you know. Now she watches it. She's gotten over some things, but like she, she can't separate reality from, you know, the show. Yeah. And I want to spoiler alert, but there was there was a, an episode where I got injured. Uh, I was shot in the episode. And I made the foolish mistake of watching that episode with my mom, you know. Wow. Jesus name. No, no, no. The <laughs> Oh, Nikulo Ruko Jesu. I was like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm right next to you. I'm on the couch. Like, we shot that like six months ago. You know, I'm okay. But it's fun. You know, I mean, we've gotten to a place now where they know this is what makes me happy and they support. And my mom knows I'm writing. My dad knows I'm writing. And they always check up on me. How's your writing going? So it's, we've, we've come a long way, I'll say. Come along awesome, way. awesome, awesome. Uh, look, lovely speaking with you. And I, uh, there's always a chance that I'll get carried away. Uh, so I, I, I wrote it down that we have to take a short break right about now. So we're just going to take a very short break and uh, we'll be back with, uh, I mean, it's just an absolute delight to, to speak with uh, Mr. Jeff, Jeff Kobe, uh, multi-billionaire, uh, you know, wow. dynasty, Samadego K. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, you're welcome back to the Teju Babyface Quarantine Show. And I'm, sp I'm still speaking with uh, Hollywood global superstar, Mr. Sam Adego K. Uh, Sam, how are you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Still there? I'm still here, yeah. All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. All right. So let's take, uh, let's talk uh, career for a moment. Uh, uh, how did this thing happen for you? I was watching, I mean, I was doing some research online before I came to speak to you. And I know that you want something, uh, the, some ABC talent thing go going on. Uh, mm. Is that is that how everything started? And just winning a talent show is, I mean, apparently not enough. How did you go from there to here? Yeah, it was, um, you know, I credit it. So ABC television has this kind of nationwide talent search that they do every year. I think the year I did it was the third year. And uh, um, they had like Cornelius from Scandal who had won it, uh, Khalil Dubot, uh, Lupita Nyong'o participated in the one in New York. And, you know, I entered it, you kind of go through a series of dramatic and comedic scenes. You put yourself on tape, they ask you questions and it's like round after round. And, I, you know, there was no way I, I thought I'd, I'd actually win. I was just doing it as another opportunity to exercise and, you know, learn the craft and, uh, you know, Thank God I, I won that. And, um, uh, you know, they put out a blast, you know, um, on a lot of entertainment media platforms. Hey, this is our 2015 winner. And before that, I was just grinding. You know, I was studying in class. I was doing student projects. And, you know, I didn't have any representation or agents. And um, that got, you know, some eyes to look at me and reach out. And so I got some reps. Um, um, and they start sending you out on auditions. And uh, the first few auditions I went out on were 
I think CBS, ABC, and uh, 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 NCIS LA, I think, and I booked those, and then, you know, work begets work, and, and, and more work started coming, and I started doing some, some recurring roles. I did Switched at Birth, I did Murder in the First on TNT, and then I did a movie. Uh, and then pilot season came around and, uh, you know, I was auditioning pilot season. It's, you know, it's crazy. You're doing multiple auditions. All the networks are trying to release their new shows and Dynasty came up and um, I had auditioned for the casting director before and, and was close on a part and she reached out. She's like, I have the part for you. This is great. Just come in, do your thing. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, so it was, it was amazing to have her kind of, you know, championing you. Um, and. Uh, got the call and they said that they wanted me for the role and uh, here we are. Okay, awesome. So uh, how many years uh, was, I mean, you've, you've spoken now, what what uh, what span, how many years was that span between when you uh, did the ABC thing and when you landed on um, on uh, Dynasty? I, I want to just have a picture of, uh, I want to be plotted. A little less, so 2015 was ABC and uh, Dynasty I booked in 2017. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 17. Yeah. That was a fast. I mean, that was that was very fast. I mean, you're like you're like an exception to the rule. I mean, from what I know and what I've read and what I've seen, uh this that usually isn't the story for most people. I, you know, yeah, I mean, for me aggregately when I think of, you know, how long you've been in the trenches, it, it, it <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like you're going along like this, you know, and then you're going like this and then something can happen to just take you like this. So in the aggregate from the ABC to 2017, yeah, but you know, I've, I've been studying in one one form or, or another since 2007. Okay. Um, you know, even though I didn't share a broadcast with people that I was, so it's it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been a okay. journey. Uh, now I heard you say in one interview, in one uh, interview that I was watching, you said that uh, you said something that just uh, made me remember some of the race, uh, the stories and race stereotypes that I'd heard about uh, Hollywood and all, all the rest of that. Uh, for example, I was hearing uh, a comedian say once, in fact, a couple of people have said once that uh, as a black person in Hollywood, that at some point, uh, they're going to want to put you as a man in a dress. That mm. at some point as a black man, they're going to want to make you wear a dress, you know, as an actor, you know. And some people have just said, no, when that day comes, I'm never going to do that. And they said that was the re reason why their careers didn't go beyond a certain point and, and all of that. Now, I, I heard you say, and that really cracked me up. I really had a good laugh that, look, I, you just have to deal with it. As a black actor, at some point as a black actor, you're going to play either a slave or a drug dealer. Just just deal with it. I, I mean, that, that just cracked me up. You, I mean, you know, thankfully, this the narrative is changing. I think, you know, with, with things like Black Panther and Moonlight, some movies have really broken down the door in terms of the diversity of characters we can play. But I mean, yeah, my, my first role uh, on ABC's Wicked City, I played a drug dealer, you know, and, and you know <laughs> so I mean? you, you're done your time already. Box, you know, I checked the box. Um, but, you know, now I, I feel like, you know, our stories are being more valued. And, you know, you look at the movies that are being made and, and you know, I, I'm, it's an exciting time to be, um, uh, you know, an, uh, an actor of color. But for me, you know, I will say, uh, yeah, there's 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 actors who you know have said that oh you got to put on a dress and you got to I'm I'm more drawn to story, you know what I mean? If if a character tells a really amazing story and it's a story of an unsung hero or um, you know oh, um, something that can dispel commonly held myths, you know um, I'm open. That's to me that's more the core. If it's kind of like salacious stereotypes kind of for the sake of it, then, you know, I withdraw from that. But, you know, you look up a story like Moonlight, you know what I mean? I'm a perfectly straight heterosexual man, but that story broke down a lot of barriers, you know, when it comes to black communities and kind of stigmas we hold around homosexuality. And, you know, I'm more liberal in my mind thinking, you know, I believe people should be allowed to live as they want to live. So if it's those type of stories and it, it can help move us along to be more accepting of one another, then, you know, I, I will do it. Mm, okay. Okay. So uh, final question uh, here before I let you go. Uh, coronavirus, uh, yeah. how do you think it plays out for you? Are you one of those who uh, want uh, uh, the um, the virus and everything that it, uh, that is brought along with it, the lockdown and everything? Are you one of those who just wants it to be totally over so that we can go back to life as usual? Or you're one of those who 
is really excited and is looking forward to the change that this uh, uh, thing is going to bring. Life is never going to go back to normal again. This Man, is disruption. I think both. You know, I, I can't, I'm so stir crazy right now. I'm ready to get the hell out and go do something. You know, what I mean? <laughs> still for me is 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 tough. Um, and yeah, it's it's a crazy time that we're in. You know, but to to your second point about am I excited for change? I hope. You know, I hope that we don't go back to being the same. You know, look, history has shown there's been, you know, cataclysmic events like this before. And we look at the world that we're still in, you know, we look at how much we've changed. It maybe hasn't been that much. So my hope is that, you know, we come out of something like this and, you know, take a look at ourselves. And, and if, if for nothing else, this is real, it's made us realize just, you know, how connected we are and how, you know, everyone literally wants the same thing at the end of the day. You know, happy home, healthy family, you know, safety for loved ones. So I, I hope we can keep those things in mind, you know, um, uh, as we come out of this and have better leadership, particularly in Nigeria. <laughs> well, th thank you very much for bringing that up. It's not as if you people are not also having your own problems with, you know, injecting yourself with disinfectants and all of that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we are, we are. I mean, there's, there's definitely problems here uh, and poor leadership. Um, but the only reason I bring up Nigeria is to compare and say, it's, but we're already operating at a disadvantage in developing. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so uh, I promised that was the last question, but you got to uh, allow me one more just for your fans. Um, All right, so yeah, I got time. you already broke it down. Uh, you're straight up uh, heterosexual person. Uh, you like the ladies and all that. So I, I guess one or two ladies want to know, uh, is Sam going to get hitched anytime soon? Is that anywhere on your horizon? Is that going to happen? Listen, my mom calls me every day. We are waiting. We are waiting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would like to settle down. Absolutely. You know, I would like to settle down and, and, and raise a family. But, you know, it's not something you enter into lightly. You know, you have to find the right partner. That's, that's, that excuse just never grows old, does it? I mean, <laughs> that excuse, that excuse is just timeless. It's ageless. You know, you, know, you don't rush. You, you don't rush into it. You know, I mean, you knew, so you, know, <laughs> you made the choice. So, well, how do they say "ojoko ni ojoko" now? So, I mean, you have no idea just how much it thrills me to hear you say "yoruba" every time you do. I'm, you know, for that reason, even though I wasn't gonna. Uh, so I'm going to sign out now and just greet you in Yoruba. Just very simple, you know. So uh, so first of all, I'm, I'm going to do it in English. Uh, so Sam, thank you very much for doing this. God bless you. And I look forward to chatting with you again. And hopefully the next time we're going to do it in the proper studio, you know, maybe back home in Nigeria with all the audience. And, you know, you can sign autographs and all of that for them. So thank you very much. Now, Sam, Mudupe Golowel. you. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, brother. God bless you. Thank you so much, man. Have a blessed day. All right, stay with us, everybody. That was Sam Adego. Okay, we'll be right back on the Teju Babyface Korat Show. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>